Good evening, my name is Patricia Barnett and welcome to my discussion on Continuum Theory, Path Goal Theory, Leadership Substitutes Theory, and Contingency Leadership Theory. Continuum Theory. It focuses on who makes the decision. Researchers say leadership behavior is on a continuum from boss center to employee centered leadership using seven different styles, ranging from autocracy to a more participative or democratic style, which engages the employee. Number one, leader makes decision that's not open to discussion. Two, leader makes decision and convinces employee that it is a good idea. Three, leader presents decision and asks if there are questions. Four, leader presents decision subject to change after receiving input. Five, leader presents situation and asks for input, then makes decision. Six, leader allows employee to make decision within set limits. And seven, leader allows employee to make ongoing decisions. Research also says that a leader's choice on how to lead should be focused on three variables, boss, subordinate, and situation. Boss, their personality, preferred style of behavior, previous experience, values, and confidence in those they lead are taken into consideration when determining a style of leadership and whether or not decisions are going to be made autocratically or democratically. Subordinates. Their preferred style of being led is based on their personality and behavior also. Leaders ought to be aware, though, of the subordinates' willingness and abilities to participate, thereby determining the level of autocracy or democracy involved. The final variable, situation or time, this speaks to the size of the organization, its culture, climate, goals, and technology. Also, it takes time to engage subordinates in the decision-making process, which could lead to an appearance of autocracy. The major criticism with this theory is it's too subjective and too ambiguous as it relates to the three, two, the three variables and when to use which. Path goal theory comprises of four leadership styles and focuses on the leader using the appropriate style to influence, guide, or motivate employees or subordinates to maximize performance job satisfaction, and goal achievement. The four leadership styles are directive, supportive, participative, and goal achievement oriented. Directive style, leader provides high structure, followers want authority, authority leadership, there's ambiguity with the work, external locus of control exists, and there's job satisfaction in the work groups. Supportive style, leader provides high consideration, appropriate when autocracy isn't the right approach. Formal authority is weak, internal locus of control exists, and tasks are unambiguous and work group job satisfaction is low. Participative, leader includes employee input in decision making. Here employees want to be involved, they have internal locus of control, and their ability is high. Tasks can either be ambiguous or not, and job satisfaction can either be high or low. Achievement oriented. This style comprises elements of both directive and supportive styles. The leader sets difficult but achievable goals. Employees are expected to perform at high levels and are rewarded for doing so. This theory has provided useful ways for leaders to think about motivating employees but also criticized for some complexity with the application of the styles. Leadership or leader judgment is required when choosing a style. Notwithstanding, this theory has broadened in scope and has led to the development of other theories being used today. Leadership substitutes theory, suggests self-managed teams, and makes leadership style unnecessary or redundant. The assumption is that some leadership styles will be effective. However, there will be factors outside of the leader's control that have greater impact and affect outcomes, thereby making the leader's role unnecessary in some cases or has neutralized the leader's behavior. Here are some substitutes for leadership. Characteristics of the subordinates, characteristics of the task itself, and characteristics of the organization. Let's take a look at the characteristic of the subordinates. 
their ability, knowledge, experience, need for independence, professional orientation, or indifference all contribute to the substitution for leadership. Characteristics of the task itself. Clarity and routine of task, unchanging methodologies, innate satisfaction derived by employees for doing their job and employees' ability to provide their own feedback regarding accomplishments. Characteristics of the organization. Spatial distance between leader and follower. Inflexibility, perhaps, of the organization. Cohesive work groups. Rewards not within the leader's control. The assumption is employees do not need to be told how to do their job. The effectiveness of the leader role has been reduced. Leaders would therefore need to know how and when to fill gaps not covered by task, subordinates, or organization. This theory is criticized for simply replacing formal leadership with that of peers. So in essence, leadership is still present. The last theory this evening is the contingency leadership theory, which focuses on leader, follower, and situation, and whether the leader style is dominantly task-oriented or relationship-oriented. Contingency leadership theory also speaks to situation favorableness. Is the situation one where the leader has the ability to exert influence over followers? The more control the leader has, the more likely the favorableness of the situation. Three variables exist for situation variableness. Leader-member relationship. Is it good? Is there trust, respect, confidence in the leader? The better the relationship, the more favorable the situation. Two, task structure. Does structure exist? Are tasks easily understood? The more structure, the more favorable the situation. Position power. Is power strong or weak? Does leader have power to hire, fire, give raises, etc.? The more power, the more favorable the situation. Research suggests that leaders' effectiveness depends on personality and behavior and how well they fit the job or situation. The two words, it depends, are key words when one talks about this theory, since how a leader responds will depend on the trait of the leader and the followers and the particular situation. Variables like globalization will require a definitive contingency approach. This theory is not a one size fits all. My approach today in my organization, what I employ personally is for one, I am a relation, I am relationship oriented. So I take the time to know and understand employees at their level while allowing them to learn and understand me. I don't always make it about the job or task, but focus some on the relationship as that approach eases the burden of the day to day and instills trust and respect. I understand that no two employees are the same. I meet employees where they are in knowledge and skills. I am self-aware, but also aware of uniqueness of individuals. I tailor my personality to the particular team member because I am aware of their personality. I am candid with communication and overwhelmingly encourages the same of the team. Their input and ideas are sought after to encourage ownership. This eventually helps with task assignment, group dynamic, and overall employee morale. Thank you all for listening.